Hello, and welcome to my Java Memory Management Training in Practice tutorial. In this video, we are going to look at Java Memory Management from a very practical perspective. To demonstrate the basic principles of how the Java Virtual Machine performs garbage collection, we are going to write a couple of simple test cases and use a graphical memory visualization tool to see in real time what the JVM is doing when our code is running. By the way, if you want to replicate this experiment on your own, you will find all the necessary links and installation instructions right here in this web page, including a link to download the source code. The address of this web page is shown in the video notes below. Let's start by taking a look at the code first. Here in Eclipse, I have set up a simple Java project with just two classes Alpha, which is a simple value class, and App which is the application entry point where the main method is defined, along with a couple of test cases. Let's take a look at the alpha class first. It has two properties, one of type string and the other of type long. It has one single no arguments constructor, which initializes both properties with random values. It has one accessor method for each property, and it overrides the two string method from the object class. It's all very simple. But before we move on, here is a question for you. Can the values of the properties of this class change once an object has been created? Have a think about it. We will discuss the answer at the end of the video. Now let's move on to the app class. As mentioned before, the app class is the entry point of our application where the main method is defined. We have set the initial memory allocation for the heap space to 128 megabytes. The heap is the memory space used by the Java Virtual Machine to allocate objects created by the application. We have also set the maximum size of the heap to 256 megabytes. The initial and maximum heap size can be set by passing the XMS and XMX parameters to the JVM. In Eclipse, this can be done by selecting Run from the menu, then selecting Run Configurations, then clicking on the Arguments tab and entering the parameters in the VM Arguments section, as shown here. OK, let's close that and go back to our code. In the App class, we have defined two test cases, each one in a static method. In the first test method, called One Reference Test, we have defined one single reference to alpha objects called aref. Next, inside an infinite loop, we instantiate several alpha objects. At any one time, only one of the alpha objects, the most recently created, will be referenced by aref, as illustrated in the simple diagram in the method comment. Also notice that the aref variable will never go out of scope and therefore will always be a valid reference. In fact, the application never exits the method. In the Java Virtual Machine, an object that is no longer referenced in the application or whose reference goes out of scope is considered garbage and becomes a candidate to be removed from memory by the garbage collector. So, what do you think will happen when we run this code? Let's find out. To see the runtime behavior of the application in real time, we are going to use a graphical tool called Visual VM. On the left pane of the Visual VM in the Applications tab, we can see all the Java applications that are running locally. In my system, it is showing Eclipse, which is the integrated development environment that I am using for this project, and the Visual VM itself. We will now run our first test so that we can see what happens in the heap memory space allocated to our application in real time. So, let's switch back to the editor. All we have to do is to uncomment the call to the method and run the application. We can see that it is running as soon as it starts logging the alpha object attributes to the console as they are created. Moving back to the Visual VM, we can see that our Java application has been added to the list of running applications in the local host. We just need to right-click it and select Open, then go to the Monitor tab and just leave the memory box checked. 
it shows in orange the heap size, and in blue, how much heap space is being used over time. We can start to observe a clear pattern here. Memory usage goes up to a point, then a garbage collection cycle occurs, and memory is freed again from all the many unreferenced objects in our test code. This pattern will continue to go on and on like this for as long as we leave the application running. Also notice that the heap size, the orange area, remains constant at a level well below the maximum size that we have set at 256 megabytes. In the next tab, we can see how much memory is being allocated for the metaspace, a separate memory area from the heap where all the class metadata and static content are stored. Let's now take a look at what goes on with the central processing unit, the CPU. The orange line shows how much CPU is being used by the application, and the blue line how much garbage collector activity there is. In this test, we are making life easy for the garbage collector, as only one of the many objects created by the application has a valid reference. Therefore, it is no surprise that the level of GC activity is very low, close to zero. Another interesting real-time display to look at is located in the Visual GC tab. The Visual GC is actually a Visual VM plugin, and the web page link in the video notes below contain also instructions on how to set it up. Inside the Visual GC screen, we can see in more detail how the Java memory space is organized in the Spaces window. Disregarding the metaspace, the other areas are parts of the heap, which is divided into young generation, composed of Eden, Survivor 0, and Survivor 1 spaces, and the old generation space. The Eden is reserved for the allocation of new objects. When the space is full, a garbage collection cycle occurs. This is called a minor GC. Most objects created in Java applications are short lived. Therefore, garbage collection cycles in this space are more frequent. Objects that survive a minor GC collection are moved to one of two survivor spaces, S0 or S1. The minor GC collection also checks the survivor objects and moves them to the other survivor space. One of the survivor spaces is always empty. Objects that have survived a number of collection cycles are finally moved to the old generation space. In our first test case, the Eden fills up quite quickly. A garbage collection cycle runs and very few objects end up in the survivor spaces. And none of the alpha objects survive enough minor GC cycles to be promoted to the old generation space, which, as you can see, does not grow. On the right side graphs window, we can see the size of each space as well as how it is used over time. There is also data about compile time and garbage collection time. We have now seen what happens in the heap memory space of an application producing a large number of small objects that quickly become available to be garbage collected. It is now time to move on to our second test and give the garbage collector a little more work to do. Let's go back to the editor, stop the application and clear the console. We also need to comment the call to the first test case method. Let's take a look at our second test defined in the static method full reference test. First, we instantiate an array list of alpha objects. Then, inside an infinite loop, we create an alpha object and add it to the list. Here, each new alpha object created by the application will be referenced by an element of the array that internally stores objects in the ArrayList collection class. The simple graphic representation in the method comment illustrates this second test case. Also notice that the ALIST variable that references our ArrayList object will never go out of scope because the application never exits the method. Therefore, its underlying array elements will always be a valid reference for as long as the application runs. This test scenario is effectively the opposite to our first test, as each newly created alpha object will never become garbage. So, 
What do you think is going to happen in the heap when we execute this test? Let's uncomment the second test case method, run the application, and switch back to the Visual VM to find out. This time, let's start by looking at the Visual GC spaces. Since alpha objects in the young generation survive several minor GC cycles, they end up promoted to the old generation space, which grows very quickly. Let's now look at the Monitor tab. Since all our newly created application objects cannot be removed from memory, the first thing the JVM attempts to do is to increase the size of the heap to accommodate demand, the orange area. Remember that we specified a maximum heap size of 256 megabytes, and therefore, it cannot grow beyond this limit. Looking at the graphic for the CPU usage, we also note a remarkable difference in relation to our first test. CPU usage is much higher here, and so is the level of garbage collector activity. At a certain point, the garbage collector will run non-stop in the attempt to regain as much heap space as possible. Contrast that with the GC activity level of our first test, which was close to zero. At some point, the JVM will be consuming close to 100% of the CPU time allocated to our process, busy performing garbage collection, but only being able to reclaim very small amounts of heap space. When such a situation is detected, the JVM will throw an out-of-memory error and the application will be terminated. And here it is, logged in the console. Exception in main thread. Out of memory error, GC overhead limit exceeded, as expected. And that concludes our second test. It shows, in an accelerated way, what typically occurs in a Java application that has a memory leak. If you recall, I have asked earlier on in the tutorial if the values of the properties of an object of the alpha class could be changed once an instance has been created. If you answered no, you are absolutely right. The reason is that the alpha class only provides accessor methods, that is, the get methods. It does not provide any mutators, that is the set methods, and therefore the alpha class is immutable. Immutable classes are preferred whenever possible because they are thread safe. But I'm digressing here, as this is a different subject which would deserve its own space in another tutorial. Again, if you would like to try this experiment on your own, head to the URL shown in the video notes below, where you will find all the necessary links and instructions. You can have fun modifying the code by adding new tests and see in real time how it affects memory management. Of course, Visual VM has many more features that have not been covered here, and I would be very happy to cover them in future tutorials, depending on request. If you are interested, just leave a comment below. I hope you have enjoyed this video tutorial. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up, share it, or subscribe to this channel. Thanks for watching, and see you soon.